Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today, Job 38 through 40. So we are now looking at the end of discourse. Uh, that was yesterday, and today we are looking at God speaking. So yesterday was Elihu, and again, his suggestion that maybe God isn't listening at all to Job. Well, we'll see today whether or not that's true. So today, again, 38, 39, and 40. So chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped up its thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like a garment. The wicked are denied their light, and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. What is the way to the abode of light, and where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths for their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. Have you, have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain and a path for the thunderstorm, to water a land where no man lives, a desert with no one in it, to satisfy a desolate wasteland and to make it sprout with grass? Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb does, comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost in the heavens? When the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen, can you bind the beautiful Pleiades? Can you loose the cords of Orion? Orion? Can you bring forth the constellations in their season, or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who endowed the heart with wisdom or gave understanding to the mind? Who has wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wander about for lack of food? Chapter 39. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Do you count the months until they bear? Do you know the time they give birth? They crouch down and bring forth the young. Their labor pains are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds and leave. Uh, they leave and do not return. Who let the wild donkey go free? Who untied his ropes? I gave him the wasteland as his home, the salt flats as his habitat. He laughs at the commotion in the town. He does not hear a driver's shout. He ranges the hills for his pasture and searches for any green thing. The wild ox are con Will the wild ox consent to serve you? Will he stay by your man manger till night? Can you hold him to the furrow with a harness? Will he till the valleys behind you? Will you rely on him for his great strength? Will you leave your heavy work to him? Can you trust him to bring in your grain and gather in your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully but they cannot compare with the pinions and feathers of the stork. She lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that a foot may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly, as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain, for God did not endow her with wisdom or give her a share of good sense. Yet, when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at the horse and rider. Do you give the horse its strength or clothe his neck with a flowing mane? Do you make him leap like a locust, striking terror with his proud snorting? 
He paused fiercely, rejoicing in his strength, and he charges into the fray. He laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. He does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles at his side, along with the flashing spear and the lance. In frenzied excitement, he eats up the ground. He cannot stand when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet, he snorts. Aha! He catches the scent of battle from afar, the, com the shout of the commanders, and the battle cry. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread his wings toward the south? Does the eagle soar at your command and build his nest on high? He dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is his stronghold. From there, he seeks out his food. His eyes detect it from afar. His young ones feast on blood, and where the slain are, there is he. Chapter 40 The Lord said to Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's, and can your voice thunder like his? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at every proud man and bring him low. Look at every proud man and humble him. Crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them in the dust together. Shroud their faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. Look at the behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength he has in his loins, what power in the muscles of his belly. His tail sways like cedar. The sinews of his thighs are close-knit. His bones are tubes of bronze, his limbs like rods of iron. He ranks first among the works of God, yet his maker can approach him with his sword. The hills bring him their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants he lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal him in their shadow. The poplars by the stream surround him. When the river rages, he is not alarmed. He is secure, through, though the Jordan should surge against his mouth. Can anyone capture him by the eyes or trap him and pierce his nose? Again, we have these just incredible imagery that are shown in this book of Job, but this time it's God talking and it is incredibly powerful. I mean, this is, this is really intense stuff. I mean, there's a note here that kind of gives us this reminder of who are we, who is Job and who God is. So this note is on uh, 38 uh, verse 21. 38.21 says, Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. And that's God, obviously, speaking. And the note says, God is not above using sarcasm, as this barb directed at Job clearly shows. His entire speech stresses the vast difference of God, of the God of all creation, and one puny man like Job. Do you have an arm like God's? He asks. And that's in 49, or 40, chapter 9. Chapter 40, excuse me, verse 9. Incredibly powerful stuff. And I have to wonder, I'm like, man, I'm really glad that God hasn't reproached me like this, that God hasn't given me just biting sarcasm that just cuts to my core and just destroys me. And yet God, the perfect communicator, has, has communicated what I can handle and measure when I can handle it. But this is a great reminder, not only for Job, Obviously, this is a great reminder for us as well. I mean, when we start thinking we know so much, I mean, pride being chief among some of those deadly sins, right? The, the pride just comes in out of nowhere, and we think we know more than God. And you hear this all the time among atheists, people who don't believe in God, and they have this pride with their 40 years of experience, their 40 years of life, and this is God just dismantling all of that. We just know nothing in comparison with a perfect, holy, righteous creator who is outside of time because he created time. But it's worth remembering and worth praying about. So let's do it. God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your gracious communication, Lord. And we thank you for the, the harsh reprisal when we need it. Lord, help us to remember who we are and who you are. Lord, that there is no comparison. God, please remind us gently and continue to have grace with us, Lord, but help us to not forget that you are sovereign, you are supreme and all-powerful. 
We thank you so much for your, your power, Lord, but also for your grace and your love in sending Jesus, your son. We thank you so much for his life. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that is about all I have for today. Know that I appreciate you, wife, appreciate you tons. And uh, yeah, appreciate you putting up with the new change of scenery here uh, on vacation. So kind of all over the place. So I appreciate that as well. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.